Good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us on this Kickstart Your Cricket Season webinar. My name's Will here from Pitch Hero, and hopefully today's going to prove to you guys to be somewhat um, helpful to getting your season going. Obviously, you guys will probably have questions along the way. I'm more than happy to answer them. So if you just want to drop those in the Q&A section, uh, we'll come to it at different points throughout the webinar. And we'll stop. I'll answer a few questions. And then at the end, I'll also answer any more that you've got. Right. So Pitch Air is all about helping you volunteers. We're all about the volunteers. We, we just want to make your guys' lives easier. Obviously, at the minute, there's a cost of living crisis, which is affecting absolutely everybody. The rising cost for a few bills for the fuel food it's not great so the type this is the sort of the time of year and um, specifically this season that you're going to be wanting to use pitch hero get the advantages out of tracking your payments collecting any any more revenue for the club that you can and helping in any way that's possible also we all completely appreciate the sport is the perfect escape at the minute for all your members so to start us off we're just going to have a sort of recap of what's changed since you've last um, been using or since last season in terms of cricket. So we've made changes to the social media accounts in terms of what can be posted. Um, so you can now post directly to Facebook and Twitter, your match reports, you can post photo albums and any club events you've got. Additionally, um, safeguarding features to provide registered parents visibility of messages sent to their children has changed. Um, so that may change how you communicate with your members a little bit. We're going to do a separate webinar on this at another time. So if you have any questions on that, please hold off until we do that. The last one is the capacity limits on ticket and tour products. So if you guys are selling, let's say, a club barbecue um, event, you can do tickets and put a capacity at, let's say, 100, and then it'll show sold out once it's been purchased and hit that limit. Nice and simple for you. Obviously, we're always here to help. So you can book demos. That would be with myself, and that's through the uh, join.pitchera.com forward slash demo link. Or you can always email the support team, which is support at pitchera.com. They're always on hand to help. So what we're going to be covering today, um, we'll keep it sort of nice and simple and um, round it off to what is needed in terms of the setup of your season. So updating the access for your admins. We're going to then cover the creation and addition of a new season. And then we're going to move on to migrating your players, coaches and team admins up age groups. This will also include um, doing sort of a bit of a... Um, admin job on what teams need to be removed and um, any new teams that you need to add things of that nature from there we'll move on to connecting to a league competition moving swiftly over to getting new members involved so obviously you'll have potentially newcomers to the club that you're going to be wanting to get onto pitch hero um, and then from there as well you're going to need to capture various pieces of information from them so we'll go over updating registration forms moving on it'll be uh, the updating of the news articles, so sort of content driven side of things. Additionally to that, you've got the um, add in and updating any new sponsor, you've got updating team homepages. And then we've also got the payment side of things in terms of the annual membership and then the creation or just general um, upkeep of the match fee section. So, in the first instance, obviously, we've got the updating the admin access. So, you guys want to make sure that all your coaches, new and old, um, have been added or they've got the relevant access whether that's a webmaster or a team admin um, and then additionally to that you're going to want to potentially change your club officials so whether your committees change you may want to make amends to that as well the best websites from our side of things are the ones that share the responsibility so as you can see below um, it's fairly common for clubs to have 30 plus admins two or three per team and then have a primary webmaster plus four, five, six full webmasters, sharing it around just helps. Then we'll move on to creating a new season. So it's very, very, very simple. Um, creating a new season also archives the previous season. Um, so team specific content will be um, collected and then published on sort of the under 13s page. You'll then see a list of the under 13s by season. So you can then track it that way. Obviously, you're then going to want to move um, specifically juniors up to different age groups. Um, they'll obviously go in hand in hand with your coaches, with your team admins. Um, we highly recommend you not to rename the age group because you can move things on mass and we'll cover that as we go into sort of the more demo side of this webinar. 
Pitchero integrates directly with the ECB's Play Cricket system. So what we do is we pull um, the fixtures, results, and league tables directly over from um, Play Cricket. That means that you guys, all you need to do is connect to a competition, and then there's no more adding into individual fixtures or uploading spreadsheets. Um, saves you guys a lot of admin time instead of having to sort of recreate in two systems. Um, I know my cricket club from experience absolutely love it. So you've got the inviting players and parents. So there's an invite tool. Um, it's a simple case if you upload email, uh, email addresses for the member. So from there, you can then use the invite button and just send them an email that will invite them. You can also potentially post a news item on the website to uh, try and get any recruits that have seen your website, have an eye on it, um, catch some eyes that way. Again, post it on social media, always a great way to get some people on board um, as everybody's using it th these days. Additionally, you can ask all club and team officials to share the registration link with their teams. So um, through the Picture Manager app, you could potentially send out the link directly to WhatsApp groups, Facebook Messenger groups, things of that nature. With regards to updating your news, um, we understand that it can always be a bit of a tricky time um, in terms of the lead up to the season, thinking of content, but we've given 12 news articles here that we think could be perfect for you guys to add. So obviously the new season and what to expect from the club, where there's been any changes. Um, obviously the pre-season training, that's a brilliant one. Just to get something out there, when the dates are, what night it's on, um, what age groups it's for, things of that nature. If you sign any new players, that's usually a big buzz at a club. It brings an influx of new eyes to the club. Um, and usually it gets everyone going again for the new season. Additionally, when your league fixtures have been posted, you can get them up on a news article. If you guys have then linked to your competition, your members will then be able to go directly into the team and see those fixtures. Again, when you open the online registration and the payment for the membership fees, get those promoted. They're brilliant things to do. Obviously, it brings more and more recognition to the club um, and then hopefully more eyeballs onto it and people will just get that sort of nod they need to get going with it. Again, new members welcome. Everybody's looking to recruit. It's always helpful to get new people on board. And it's a perfect way to do it by posting a news article and getting it out on the club website and then on social media. Same again with sponsors. The more revenue you can bring in is brilliant for you guys. So obviously, if you guys are posting when you've got new sponsors and you're getting eyes on it on the website and again on social media, absolutely brilliant for you guys. Additionally, if you've changed to a new kit supplier, you could then publish that, make people aware of it, show them what they're going to be wearing for the new season. I know everyone at our club loves that, so it's a perfect article to produce. Additionally, you're always going to be welcoming the help from volunteers. So if you get a news article out there, that's always one to put out. And additionally, after AGMs, things of that nature, if you've got a new committee, any coaches for the upcoming season, get something out there as well. That's always a good one for your members to have a look at. Um, essentially see a familiar face around the club as well that they may not have seen before. It's just the sort of initial introduction that always works. And then generally speaking, a thank you to your volunteers because without them, the clubs wouldn't be running half as well as they are. And I can speak from experience in my club. So with regards to your online registration form, obviously you guys are going to need to, um, you'll have a lot of the information potentially already collected from previous years. If you're a new club, you're going to want to get everything set up and work in how you need it. So if you've got something in place, obviously check your fields, make sure they're sort of still applicable for the new season, whether it's club policies that have up changed and you need to update certain things, whether there's fields that are no longer necessary. So obviously things to do with COVID over time may have become more redundant and you may need to remove them. And then you can also test the sign-up process. So if you wanted to get one of, potentially create a dummy account or get one of your other committee members to do it, you could then test the sign-up account, make sure everything is good and you're happy with it and see what your members are seeing. Also, you can email all members requesting that they check and update their personal information. You can do this from the membership database. It's nice and simple. So we'll also cover that when we go into the demo side of it. Next, onto the payments. This is usually what clubs are loving at this time of year, bringing the revenue in so you can collect more revenue, reduce the admin, and hopefully you'll never have to go back to cash and managing that way. So the first thing to do is connect the club's bank account. 
So that's done in your payment provider account. So if you've got that already set up, brilliant. There's nothing else to do there. If you haven't, you can go and do it through Stripe and go cardless and get going from there. And then the step two is to create a product. So you create your annual membership, create all the different variants, whether it's the senior membership, the junior membership, the student membership, social, et cetera. From there, you can then assign that to your members, send out prompts. They will then see it, hopefully go in within sort of 48 hours. You'll have most of your members um, having paid their annual membership and going from there. Additionally to that, once you've done that assignment and sent it out, you can track every payment. So you can track who's paid, you can track who's not paid. You can then run report exports on that. From there, you can then chase them down further. It just makes your life a little bit easier in terms of actually seeing who's paid, not paid, and then being able to track the non-payers as well. Moving on from this, we've got match fees as well, which is part of our payments. It's slightly different to the shopping payment side of things, but match fees is brilliant. So it works in terms of you can collect the match day payments via your mobile phone. So you can send the payment to the player or parents on the day of the game. So if you're having potentially uh, having teas or if it's at the end of a match, you can just go through and select the relevant uh, price or variant, should I say, for that member and then ping it out to them. Nice and simple, it doesn't take more than two or three minutes at the end of a game for your captains. So if you've got any club sponsors, obviously new season coming around, you may have old sponsors on your website. So you can obviously go in and remove them. And then if you're looking to add any new sponsors, you'll wanna make it a nice high quality image, get that tracking link included, and then any content. So you can give a description about the sponsor and what they're doing for the club. It's brilliant to put on the website. Obviously, promoting sponsors with a news item, including an image or video, is a brilliant way to do it as well. Just get that sort of notoriety out there to your members. And then additionally, another great thing that you could potentially do is send an email out to members, including your sponsors. And then whether it's an offer or a voucher code they may have, that's another thing you can then communicate with members. So one thing you may need to do uh, when you're putting the teams up and down the age groups is just tweak those team pages because you may have um, things such as training times on there, whether it's the contact for that team, and they may change with time because the uh, coaches may move up with teams, things of that nature. So it's just worth going into the team pages and double checking that and making any changes to it. Obviously, you can nudge the team admins to get that done as well. Um, and we'll cover this as well once you go into the demo side of things. And lastly, have a great season. So now we'll move on to the demo side of things and just cover a little bit more detail of what we've just gone over. And hopefully that'll prove to be quite vital for you guys in setting up everything. And like I say, any questions you've got along the way, I'll stop after every every few segments we go through here, um, see if there's any questions and then just answer them uh, live. And then we can hopefully cover most things you guys are wanting to see. So the first things get, for getting sorted is updating your admin access. So if we go into settings at the bottom here and then into access control, you've got a manage access section. So what you'll then be able to see in here is a list of all your webmasters and team admins. So obviously you guys can then track who's got access to what. So the full access is obviously your webmasters and then the team admin access, nice and simple team admin. And then if you go in and realize, oh, so-and-so is not in here, you can always make changes. So you can go into membership database, and then from there, you've got a list of all your members and it's dead nice and simple. If we just go into the Joe admin one here, you'll then be able to see if we go to roles and go, oh, he's the team admin of the under 17s. We actually want him to be the team admin of the under 16s as well. You just add it in there and hit save and then make changes to it. Same again with webmaster. So from there, what you will want to then do is again in settings, you'll need to create a seat, new season. So it's dead nice and simple to create this. All you need to do is go in, hit add a season, 
give it the relevant season name. So obviously this season's the 2023 season. You choose a start date with it being cricket. We always suggest doing it from the first of the year. So if you guys are first of Jan 2023 to the 31st of December 2023, you'll be absolutely set. You hit save and then that'll just sit in there and then it'll create the archive for all the other seasons. From there, what you can then do is if we go into teams, so if I go to teams, men's first team here, you can then connect to a season, uh, sorry, a league after you've created the season. It's nice and simple to do. So you go into the team here, you hit manage competitions. It'll then take you to this page. What you can then do is join a competition. From there, you'll get suggested that show up down here. So based off of the name of the club and the team name, whether it's first 11, second 11, things of that nature, you'll get a suggested list. If it doesn't show up, you can simply just type in something uh, it's not 2000 so if you were to type in ecb uh, 2023 this isn't going to show up with it being football um on this account but it would show up nice and simple for you guys you'll then be able to connect to it and then from there if we hit that back button what you will then see is it'll show in your active competitions here go into fixtures and then you'll get a nice list of all the fixtures that you've got for the season in here Moving on from this is obviously getting everyone in the age group sorted. So as per the season comes around, you're going to be wanting to move people up and down age groups, whether that's your players, team admins, coaches, and it's nice and simple to do with pitch era. Some people at the start of a season wonder if it's going to be a bit of a struggle. It's not. It's lovely and simple. So if we go into these roles here and then we just remove it and we'll go, we want the players, the team admins and the coaches, and then we'll just drop that down as well with teams go all remove that and let's say we'll just start at the top we'll go use the men's first team by example so we've got a nice long list here of players in this top left corner we'll just hit that get everyone highlighted go into this section here edit roles from there we can see a role so the first one you want to do is you want to remove a role so you remove that role so we'll go player to start with and then we'll choose the team so it's men's first team hit okay it'll give us another drop down. So then again, we want it to add role, select the role we want to add. So player, and then nice and simple, we'll move them over to the second team. Hit okay there. You've got the two role sort of commands that you want to run there. And then we're going to hit save. From there, it's going to then do exactly what we've just told it to. And it's going to remove all of those players from that list, drop them into the second team. And then once you go into the second team, you'll see it. The way to do it is always start from the top down. So you guys are obviously going to want to go, um, if you've got an under 18s, start at the under 18s, migrate them into potentially your senior teams. And then from there, the under 18s is then free. You can move the under 17s up into the under 18s. And then that just stops any confusion instead of having a big block list of like a load of people in the under 18s that you then have to go, oh, I'm going to need to come back to that and actually then do some auditing on it and figure out who's supposed to be in that team. So it's nice and simple. Um, and obviously, I shall take a quick second because it looks as if we've got some questions in um, before I quickly move on to anything else and I'll just answer those for you guys. Right, so... To start off with, we've got a nice top tip here from Tamara. So she said top tip is to use their a, their date of birth filter as only half of the squad changes per, t per team. Obviously, with some clubs, that would be an absolute lifesaver. So thanks for that top tip, Tamara. Tom Evans has asked, do the league connections happen automatically if same leagues as last season? Um, mine seem to have after I created a new season. So the way it works, Tom, is our lovely support team have done some work and actually gone through and begun to connect you to new competitions. So anyone that was connected to competitions last year, our support team have sort of helped out a little bit there and just gone in and connected you to a season um, to the competition this year as well. Tamara said... Where can I find the different access areas so I can work out if someone should be a coach or team admin? Last year, I needed most of my coaches to be team admins. Uh, I want to find out exactly what the difference is. So with regards to that, Tamara, it's simply what you, the um, individual can see. So with regards to being a team admin, they get access to um, absolutely everything 
uh, other than the payment side of things for their team specifically. So obviously if their team admin are the under 11s, they can see membership database, all the information that you've collected on like a registration form. They can see all that within uh, being a team admin. Coaches get a slightly limited scope. Um, if you want to get further information on that, please feel free to drop the support team an email, which is just support at pitchera.com and they'll be more than happy to help you with that. Jeff has asked, how can I download a list of non-payers into a spreadsheet? So we're going to cover that as we go through, Jeff. So if I don't end up covering it in as, as much detail as you wanted, feel free to drop another question in. Cheyenne has asked, question, when we get to payment, can you publish fees for Nets directly from the Nets attendance page in the same way that you can for match fees for select that teams so that's in regards to training fees um share so if you want to drop again the support team um an email they'll be more than happy to help so Jeremy's asked, when a team is selected, does Pitcher flag up any team members who haven't paid their membership fees? So you can run a report on that if you want. Uh, Jeremy, you can use the filters. So if you see the filters here, you can then go in and select the team. And then down here, you get a list of everything on there. So registration form questions. And then additionally, you'll also have your um, membership fees and stuff like that. So you can select it and then see a little traffic light system um, as to whether someone's paid. Marilyn has asked how to put parents and juniors together when they have different surnames. So either you guys can then search manually for it and then create the role and give the parent the role um, of parent and link it to the child that way. Uh, so it's not necessarily, it's not done automatically. You guys can do that link or the parent can apply for the role. And then obviously they can apply and then search for the child that way. So Bob, we're going to cover the upload of members. Um, so if you're still unsure about that, then feel free to contact the support team and we'll more than happily answer that question. Uh, Patrick has asked, if I've created a group for say under 13s and a group for under 15s, then change the role slash move people up. Do the group change no, to, uh, no, they don't. They would need to be changed separately as well, Patrick. Connor's asked, uh, how do we see who's paid for the current season only? Um, you can see by going into the product directly, Connor, uh, and then you can see all the assignments in there. Right, we've got another question from Moon here. Um, if you want to contact support directly, Moon, they'll be more than happy to help you with that. Amanda's asked, where is the training product in Pichero? Again, Amanda, there's something we're going to come on to is shopping payments. So if you uh, if you want to contact the support team with regards to um, training fees, you can do. Um, more than happy to help in the process of setting that up for you. Right, we'll get back into the demo of it. Um, and then again, we'll stop at another point and we'll answer any questions that people have got. So as we're in the membership, obviously you've moved your players up in age group. What you then probably want to do is just do a double check of your registration form. So obviously, if we go into the registration form here, what you'll actually be able to see is a sort of mock-up of what the members will be able to see. So if you select the roles, obviously a player, that'll give you the questions that are asked on the players form. You can then go through and see what it all looks like, your little drop downs, how everything's looking, um, just give you that sort of peace of mind before you publish it out to all members. So if you're then wanting to make any changes, you'll go into the field section. So if you see these black ones here, they're just your sort of standard pitch area ones. They'll be collected for everybody um, and then shared with the club. These blue ones are the sort of ones you guys wanted to focus on. So obviously you can just go through, have a look at absolutely everything and figure out what needs to be there and what doesn't for the new season. So if there is something in there that you think, oh, that doesn't need to be in there anymore, then obviously you can just remove it. So if we were to say, all oh, squad numbers have all changed, we're going to need to um, remove that. We'll delete that one there. It'll just remove it. And then it throws up in here. Um, obviously, it can't be deleted due to it being connected to products. So that's obviously something to know. Um, you can then go in and then edit an unlink field if you wanted to. If it's connected to products. 
So the thing to note as well is if you guys want to edit anything, it's dead simple. So if you go, there's a medical conditions question here. However, I want to then expand this to be, I want to collect it from the parents and coach as well. You can do that. And then if you wanted to give it any changes, so if you want to change the name, the short name, if you want to add a description to it, you can obviously go in and do that anytime, all this good stuff, make it mandatory. So if field's not been set to mandatory by you guys at some point, and you think actually this is something that's vital to the club and we need to capture it, then by all means, go back in, set it as mandatory, hit save. And then from there, you'll have a nice, fresh sort of set of um, questions on your registration form. So moving on from there, once you've done that, obviously you may have a list of new questions and then you may be thinking, oh, how are we going to get members to actually answer that? So what you can do, it's nice and simple. If you can just highlight all your members here, so obviously it's highlighted only 50, so you can click to select all of them. And then from there, prompt to update information. These are showing, obviously, because it's just a, this is a test and training account. Um, so these aren't actual members and they haven't been set up as you'd expect. So nice and simple it gives you a message preview you guys can add a note to it you hit send it sends them out an, an email and then also a push notification so you guys will then hopefully within sort of 24 hours of sending that out find that all of them have then come back in then like i've said with the previous um about filtering you can run the filters on so you just go in just let your filter go i've wanted to see the medical conditions and then you can choose a contains, and then you've got another one that changed is the playing position. Run those filters or hit filter on here. It'll bring up a nice little additional box here. And then you can obviously, you can see all those, go through, select members that haven't answered, prompt them to update again, or you can run exports if needs be. It's all there for you to do. The next thing that we're moving on to, once you've done that, obviously getting your registration forms key and getting that all set up is there. So once that's set up, we'll potentially need to invite any new members. It could be a case of adding them in or just inviting them in general. So if you guys have got their information, what you can then do is go into add member up here. You go, oh, they're going to be a player. They're going to be an absolute wizard of a player. So we're going to get them in the men's first team. And then from there, you're going to hit next. It'll take you through to a nice little section. So what you can then do is just put a name in. So we'll just put that in. And then date of birth. This has now become mandatory due to the safeguarding changes, like I mentioned earlier, that potentially change the way you communicate with members. Um, so if we get a date of birth added in, let's go May 2, that will go a bit earlier than that. We'll 1999, 8th of May, put an email in there, just put mine in. And then from there, obviously you can add any further information. Tick this box down at the bottom, hit add member. It'll then pull through. I'm already in the membership database, so it's not then added, but that's no worries. So what you can then do, again, if we use Joe Admin here, highlight that member. Obviously, we prompted to update information. If they're not then, um, if they're a new member and you've just added them in like that, you can then use this invite button here. So what you can then do is hit invite. It'll then bring this up. Lovely. Got that already. We'll move to this one. Hit invite. You can then include some text in there uh, and again it'll just send them um, an email so if we hit preview it'll then show you just what it looks like so it says it's hi first name of the mem new member so and so has invited you to join your club website and then again that note just shows up in here so you can include some text that you may find uh, think the members will find um, helpful in there hit send invites and then it again sends them an invite out via email and then hopefully from there they'll then be able to get sorted the other additional way you can do it is you can do it via the picture and manager app so there's a nice section in there um if you go into the members there's a nice invite members button if you click on that it'll then pull a nice little menu up you can copy the link or additionally like i mentioned earlier you can send it out via whatsapp Facebook group messenger, um, things of that nature. So it can always just make your life a little bit easier. Right, I shall just take a second again to see if there's any questions on the membership before we then move on to the more payments based. So Karen has asked a very good question here. Um, if members' telephone numbers 
slash email addresses are hidden, how do we unhide them? As admins, you guys can't. So what you can do is you can prompt members. So if it shows as hidden, uh, you can then prompt a member to unhide it. Um, additionally, the way that I personally go for it is if you then go into that member, send them a uh, communication through Pitch Hero um, and just let them know which areas of it are hidden. They can go into their account on the club app or the web browser, and then there'll be a padlock on a certain information. They can then um, unhide it from there. The, there is something that is worth noting, and that is any new members that you then get on, they'll no longer be able to hide any information um, as that's now been removed. Daniel has asked, um, would Pitchero be able to add a quality data information to your standard options in the membership form? Um, completely understand why you're looking to add that in, Daniel, uh, but that's all there for the club to be able to do. Um, so we'll be capturing the information in terms of getting the account set up and then any further information you guys need to capture, you can create them through the custom fields as I've just shown. Uh, Shane's asked, can you show how to create the new season again, please? Um, this webinar is recorded, Shane, so it'll then be sent out to all um, participants of it or just people that have registered. So you'll then be able to see that as well. Additionally, if you've missed it, um, I can potentially cover it at the end for you, but I won't be going back just at this moment, I'm afraid. So we've had another question come in here, and um, that is a brilliant question to ask as well. So what is the difference between registered and not registered? Um, registered is someone essentially that has had an email sent to them and they've registered their account, accepted all the terms and conditions, et cetera. Um, generally speaking, that's your senior members. So your juniors don't need to be registered. So by example, if you've got an under 14, you just set them up as like a player profile without an email address. Um, and then they chose obviously not registered as well. So if members have got an email address, um, and they're not registered, you'll then want them to be showing as yes under the registered com column. But obviously, if they've not got an email address and they're just a junior player, then there's no need to worry about that. Patrick's asked, if I want to thin out the database by removing members who are no longer involved with the club, what happens if they've had match fees slash subs assigned to them and not paid? Um, if you remove them, Patrick, then obviously you remove all assignments as well. Um, so you'll lose those assignments and the fees will just go unpaid. Um, obviously, that's a decision down to the club and um, whether they want to then proceed with that. But it's always worth checking the payments on the members before you then remove them. So good question to raise. And with that question from Patrick, it leads us nicely onto the payment side of things. So obviously, it's the membership for the new season. Um, whether it's just requesting payments because you've got all the products already set up or if you're a new club and you want to get them all set up. Um, I won't go directly through the setup of all the products um, and what you can do with them in shopping payments because we've got another webinar coming up uh, in about two weeks time, I think it is. I think it's the 6th of March um, to cover the shopping payments. So I won't go into too much detail here, but what I will do is I'll show you the way that you can assign members to products and then what you can then see in terms of reporting from there. So once you've created the product, obviously you'll then want to send it out to members. So you click into a product here. So we've gone into this membership 23 early bird one, um, which may be something you guys are potentially offering this year um, as it's that time of year where people may be starting to want to pay um, and you might be offering a slight discount if they're paying early. So nice and simple to do. Obviously we've got some members assigned in here already, but what you can then do is go into assign members here the best thing about it is you can filter it down to players specifically. So if you know just you just kind of want to send this out to all players, you just do players. And then that runs that filter. If you then just want to keep it to the senior teams, by example, you can then just go men's first, men's second, and the ladies first team. Those filters again will be applied. And then if you created a custom group, as someone mentioned earlier, um, you can then apply that as well if needs be. But from there, you can also um, 
you can filter it to members that have not been assigned yet, obviously on here um, in this first instance, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all members. So 100 out of 115 have been selected. So if we select all 115 members there, you can do so, create an assignment. What you will then see is all of those assignments get then published in here. Most of them go as not paid. From there, if we just click into one, What you're then able to do, um, currently I've got this one available to purchase, so this request payments isn't um, showing us an option to click, but you click this nice blue button that says request payments, and then it simply just brings up the thing saying, are you sure you want to um, request payments? And then it pings out a request to all members that have been assigned um, the product. And then what work happens on the customer side of things, or the member side of things, should I say, sorry, is they'll get a push notification and an email sent to them, um, basically saying so-and-so has requested you to purchase this product. They can then click into it. It'll take them into the list of all the products they'll see, potentially senior, junior, student, by example. They can then go and select the relevant product to them, pay for that. And then you'll hopefully see a load of these reds turn into greens. And then from there, you can then, um, once you've sort of given it maybe a week or so, you can run all these filters by on the assignments page you can fill it by status to use paid and not paid and then if you fill it to the not paid again you can then reprompt members to pay um, just by requesting the payments the next thing you can do is if you want to capture further information um, you can create a payment form so you can add membership fields in or you can then just create a custom um, form field as well so two options to do there the next thing you're then able to do is obviously run exports on the transaction list so what you can do is you can see all the uh, transactions that have gone through, uh, the product, the variant of the product. So you can see who it's paid for. So it'd be member A, by example, and then paid by could be the parent. And then, like I say, you can run exports on this, pull it into um, Excel, run further filters on it, and then do as and what you need to with the information. The last thing I'll quickly note is at this time of year, it's quite good to see who's purchased what on a day to day basis. So we have this um, club shop daily report. So if you tick this, what you'll then find is all webmasters with access to shopping payments and um, will then get an email at the end of the day, just saying a breakdown of what's been purchased during the day. So obviously, as you're pushing your membership live, it can be really helpful to get that going um, and just sort of see the payments coming in. Um, from your members and then you can potentially as you go through just notice certain payers and non-payers and people you may want to contact from there as well um, so like i say all the information is in here you've got everything that you may need um, and then the assignments it's a brilliant feature i absolutely love it at our club you can pinpoint exactly who hasn't paid and then you can just um, you, again run exports you can pass it on to captains um, team admins things of that nature to then chase members further you can do as and what you need to with the information um, and like I say absolutely brilliant in terms of actually bringing in further revenue for the club because um, any payments that may have previously missed in the preceding years um, you will no longer miss them as you've got a nice report here that tells you who has and hasn't paid. So whilst again whilst we're on payments quickly over to the match fees so again you may find that some of you guys have already got match fees set up from last year and then some of you guys may be new clubs, so you haven't yet set this up. So obviously in here, we've got a list of absolutely loads of match fees. Um, so if you guys have got match fees already set up, what you'll then um, be able to do, so if I go into this Winter League 22 here, this is the one with all the teams assigned to it and everything like that. What you can then do, if I go into Info, you can click on that, hit Edit, and then you can make changes to the price. So but if, by example, um, you guys had the decision that match fees are going to drop in price by from £10 to £8 and then from there you're going to increase your annual subscription to a little bit more things of that nature you can just make changes and um, hit update and then from there you can keep the same match fee product that you had from the previous year and then obviously start to then use it uh, for the season going forward at that slightly lower rate um, additionally if we go back into the products here what you can then do is you can create a new match fee so you can add a match fee. So all the teams have been signed to match fee at the minute. That's absolutely fine. Um, what you would then do is you can just go back into products, find the, the teams that have been, sorry, the match fees that have actually been selected and then go into teams here. And then you'll see these two teams. We're just going to remove them from this one and then go back into products. 
So that nice reminder gives you the heads up uh, that you can do it. So if we go match fees summer 23, hit next, you can create all the options again, add teams, just add the men's first team. Oh, should we do second team for this one? Hit next, you've got your match fee summary there, add other options, finish that up, nice and simple. And then from there, you're ready to go with your match fees for the new season. And like I said before, um, we've got a webinar on the 6th of March coming up. Um, that'll be during the day, which is going to go over shopping payments and then match fees as well. So we'll do a nice in-depth um, introduction and just reminder of that for you guys. Right, as we finish the payment side of things, again, we'll just take a little breather, um, answer any questions that you guys have got on that, and then we'll pick up going from there. Right, so we've got a couple of questions here. Uh, one from Sarah saying, do you need to add a new product for each year for membership? So it's up to you guys completely. So when, again, like I said, we're going to run a webinar on shopping payments in terms of going a bit more into depth of the creation of products, what you can then see, um, how it works for you guys, how it works for the member. But briefly on this, um, you get an option. So if you've created the product for like your 2022 season um, and it was a one-off payment, then yeah, you'll need to um, create it for a new season. You can clone products. Uh, to use the sort of pre-existing template that you've got and just tweak it for the 2023. However, if it's set up as a subscription, which is sort of like a direct debit, then no, you may not need to create it. Um, but like I say, Sarah, there's going to be another webinar for shopping payments. So uh, maybe helpful to tune into that one as well. Tom said he's having to shoot out. No worries. Uh, yeah, the webinar will be sent around, Tom. Um, so thanks for joining. Amanda said, where parents make errors using their name instead of their child's when buying a product, can we now edit the record uh, when we pull reports on names and training products, for example? Um, so what you can do, um, Amanda, is if we go into shopping payments and products, if you realize, by example, someone's paid for um, their child and they've put the wrong name on it, what you can do is, let me just filter by status, paid I thought was, you can see paid for, paid by. We'll just click into that. See tag members here. You can see the tag member is Jamie. If we then remove that, what you will then be able to do once that's then removed is go down here, search for the child, select the child, add the tag there. Um, and then essentially, obviously, it'll then show the parent as the payee um, and then the child as the paid for. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Nick's asked, is the match fees section the best area to set up payments for winter nets? Um, and can this be done on a week-to-week -week basis as opposed to setting up loads of different products for different weeks? Yeah, Nick, it can be used um, for that if you wanted to. So you could set up like a training team. From there, you could set up the training sessions as fixtures. So if it's a Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, you can just create it um, as that. And then from there, obviously, you can then use the team selection to create the um, match fee assignments and publish them out that way. So, yeah, that's a workaround that you can do for training. Um, Jeff, you've mentioned, will we answer the spreadsheet question now or at the end of or at the webinar on the 6th? So with regards to pulling exports, Jeff, it's a case of um, if you want to, we can send you a few examples of that. We won't be covering that directly on a webinar, um, but if you want to get in touch with the support team, they can send you over a few examples of what the reports look like. Uh, Jeremy's asked, are all payments still shown as direct debits? No, that depends on what you, payment provider you're using, Jeremy. Um, so the payment providers that we currently have are Stripe and Go Cardless. Um, Stripe is credit card, debit card, Apple Pay, and Go Cardless is your direct debit. So if your guys are showing up as direct debits, it's highly likely that you're using Go Cardless. Um, if you want to offer the members the ability to pay by um, card, then it would be a case of creating a Stripe account and setting it up that way. 
Shan has asked, can we delete old payment products that are no longer valid? Um, so you can't delete them directly, Shan, because obviously you don't want to then lose the reporting for that. But what you can do is archive a product. Um, so I can quickly show you how to do that. So again, if we go into products, there's three little dots on the right hand side of a product. You just click that and then an archive shows up. Um, so when it loads, hit these little three buttons here. See down at the bottom there, archive product, just hit that. And then it removes it um, from there. And then obviously any subscription payments that are potentially still going through will still go through. Um, and then anyone that's finished their payment cycle will be nothing, nothing to worry about. Um, and then you can run a filter as well and find any archive products to run further reports on that if you need be. Uh, Ed's asked, are you still planning to launch tickets with no cost? Um, to be honest, Ed, I don't know, don't think that was ever on the cards um, because the premise of the shopping payments is to take uh, payments through it. Um, and obviously, if you're then going to be creating something that's of no cost, um, that's potentially not going to go through it. So the answer is, I don't think we were ever looking to do that. Um, and no, we're not going to be looking to do that in the future. I'm glad that you find the tag numbers helpful, Amanda. So no worries on that. Steve has asked, uh, this webinar, will it be available to view with other of our webinar website members who are unable to attend tonight? Yes. Yeah, so essentially, Steve, um, if you signed up to this webinar um, or other people have signed up that aren't able to um, attend, a copy will be sent out. And then from there, um, it's just a case of you'll just be able to click in through the link and rewatch it, skip to any parts that you think may be helpful. Um, and then, yeah, you can share it around to other people as well if needs be. Uh, Nick has asked, can we add in people who become members paying cash, e.g. people who come to the club and um, become social members to benefit from a discount spot? Absolutely, Nick. Um, yeah, completely possible to do. So if you guys, again, if you set up a product um, like this 2023 membership, the early bird one, and then obviously you've got a different variants. If you created a social one, by, by example, what you can then do is obviously in these assignments here, you just create an assignment for the member. So I'll click into the Mark Fletcher one here. From there, in this top right, you can see add a manual payment, hit add a manual payment. You can choose the variant. So obviously if you had a social member one in here, just in case of selecting that. So just click this two months one, by example, the price is 75 quid, you select that. And then you've got the option of cash, bank transfer or check. And then additionally, if you want to add a note, um, I know at Michael, when this happens, they just put um, cash given and this date, um, just to sort of give a little reminder, hit add. And then from there, it will then show them the status is paid. And um, so if we then go back here and then go into the product, the assignments, you'll then see this will then be shown as paid. So hopefully that's answered your question. Right. The last thing that we're going to move on to um, is just sort of the content side of things. So with regards to this, it's going to be the updating the sponsors and updating the, the various teams pages. First thing we'll do is keep it within teams and then go into that. So we'll go to the men's first team here. So obviously, like I mentioned, you'll be moving your teams up and down the age groups. And then from there, um, you'll have the home pages that will have information, maybe about the coaches, best contacts, um, certain things that obviously applicable to a specific team that have then moved up to from the under 15s to under 16s, by example. So if we were to treat this as let's say it was under 15s, what you can then do is by example, here it says, please contact our head coach, Will. Will may not no longer be the head coach. It may be um, Harry, Steve, et cetera. Um, so you can then just go in, make changes there. So we'll just change Will to Steve. And then from there, you can just go a bit further down An email contact. You may go, oh, James is no longer the one to contact. We'll make changes to that. And then at the bottom here, you can save it again, team photos, team may have changed. So you can just delete this one until the time that you take a new one, get that uploaded if, need, if needs be. And then again, if you want to include the name of the players that are pictured, you can do so. Hit save. That'll then update the front end of it. So if people go to the team page on the front end of the website, they'll then be able to see absolutely everything. The next one um, is your sponsors. So obviously you've got absolutely everything here in terms of news, events, photos, videos, and then you've got sponsors. So you may have your sponsors on here. So we've got a nice few here. We've got BMW, Stratton, uh, Knight Frank, we've got JD Sports, Sony, et cetera. Um, so if we were to take the Adidas one down at the bottom here, 
what you can do is if you need to edit it, so potentially if they've got a new website, a new domain name, things like that, you can edit your sponsor and change that. So if we're going to edit sponsor here, what you can then do is make changes. As I said, if there's anything that they may want you to change in the description, again, you can do that. Or if they're no longer a um, sponsor for the year, you can set them to inactive. So moving quickly back, obviously what you can then do is delete a sponsor totally, or you can edit the placement. So it may be that a, a sponsor has gone from specifically the men's first team sponsor, and they were only on the men's first team page. Whereas they've now become like a club wide sponsor. So you want to get them everywhere. So you put them site wide, all the team's pages. And then from there, they show on all the, all the pages to get the um, acknowledgement that they wanted and all the eyes uh, from the people that are coming to the website. So nice and helpful way to do that. And then go back into the sponsors. Again, finally, the creation of a sponsor. It's dead simple to do. All you guys need, obviously, is a name. So the type of sponsor they are, like it says here, e.g., shirt sponsor a description of what the company so maybe what the company is or what they're looking to offer the club for the coming season always helpful to add in um, and then it's just a case of you just include the url for the club so if i just select that one there and then you can choose active inactive you choose an image to go with it obviously i'm not going to do that in this instance and then when you hit save it'll then take you through to the pro the placement section we were just on and then you can choose where it goes on the website absolutely brilliant so Nice and simple. Um, the last thing I will do is, as Shane asked, in terms of chain doing the season. Um, so it's nice and simple to do, Shane. So you go into settings down at the bottom here. You've got seasons, and then from there, what you'll then be able to see is the 2023 season. Um, so you may, that may be done. So we're going to add a new season, change the name of it if you need to. The start date, especially if it's cricket, um, as I mentioned previously, it's always worth starting it from the 1st of January. So if you start from the 1st of January 2023 and then you change the uh, end date, you put it as the 31st of December 2023 as well. Hit save and then from there, it'll show up in here and then save again at the bottom. What that will then do, it'll, it'll archive your 2022 season and then create the 2023 one uh, going forward. So it's nice and simple to do, nothing to arduous for you guys to do as admins um, and then from there you can get cracking so hopefully that answers your question for you Shane. right we've got a couple of minutes left so i'll just hang on and um, see if there's any more questions um then if not thanks for joining us on this webinar uh, thanks for giving up an hour of your evening and hopefully it's proved to be helpful for you guys as I mentioned before, um, a couple of times, we've got another webinar coming up on the, I think it's the 6th of March. Um, however, we'll be sending out communications about that um, coming up. Uh, so if you guys think it's going to be helpful for you to see further information on the shopping payments, then by all means, feel free to join. We'd absolutely love to have you on it. Uh, Tom has asked, can you change how sponsors are displayed on each page? Um, so how do you mean by that, Tom? Um, if you could just give us a little bit more clarification on that, then more than happy to answer that. So Steve has asked, um, sponsors, could you show how you allocate a space for them on your website? So like I showed before, Steve, it's with the placement. Um, so we go back into site content and then sponsors. So we're just going to the BMW one here, edit placement. What you'll then be able to see is you can then choose whether they're site-wide or team pages, or if they're sort of your main club sponsor, there's an additional thing you can do. So we go into the design here, go into header, customize header. You've got sponsors here. So what you can then do is, can you see along this top banner here, 
you've got three of the sponsors selected. Um, so you can select up to four, but they will then show um, sort of as the main um, prominent sponsors for the club. The other way that they show is obviously on this little carousel here. And then on various different pages, you'll have the club sponsors there as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Nick has asked about the availability being done by date rather than a match. Yes, so it is done by date, Nick. Um, more than happy to give you some more context on that. Um, it'd probably be worth, if you're a new club to Pitch Hero, um, getting in touch with myself. So it's w.dunkleyatpitchhero.com. Um, I shall also send you the my email um, privately on here so you can get in touch with me. We can get a, potentially a call booked with yourself and then hopefully help from there. Uh, Tom has said, is the placement the same for each team or can you make a certain sponsor more prominent? Um, so hopefully what I've just covered, Tom, um, in regards to Steve's question has answered that. Uh, so you can obviously whack them on a header or you can put them um, in specific places for the team. In terms of if you would do it team specific, uh, it isn't just one place of the team. Um, so if you want to see what that looks like, more than happy to quickly show you. So if we visit the website here, go into Teams. Men's first team. Have a little scroll down. You've got all the information. You've got the officials, gallery, team sponsor shows there. So hopefully that covers what you're asking, Tom. Patrick has asked, uh, will you be running a webinar that I can get captains on so they can learn about team selection, setting up, collecting match fees, uh, the front-facing app rather than the back-end stuff? So if you want, Patrick, um, feel free to get in touch with the support team or myself. Um, we can look to potentially get something sorted um, for the club uh, because we probably won't be running a webinar like that in the run up to the season. Um, but if the club sort of that's something the club's wanting, um, we can potentially get that set up for you um, and get that everyone on a call that you need. So yeah, contact support or feel free to contact myself again, w.dunkleyatpitchera.com. Um, I'll quickly send you my email as well. So look forward to hearing from you. Right, we'll just give it a couple more minutes, see if there's any further questions to come in. Um, but if not, thanks for joining everybody. Um, hope it's proved to be helpful for you.